Hi, it's John Krasinski here at Pittsburgh Soccer Now with Matthew Baldwin. Matthew, uh, one of our new contributors here at Pittsburgh Soccer Now, but uh, you know, it's it's quiet here at Highmark Stadium, and it was quiet uh, here at Highmark Stadium around the uh, 80th minute uh, when Detroit City FC kind of stunned the crowd, kind of stunned the hounds, um, and kind of rode it home for a one nothing uh, win and, and rode right out of here, uh, right out of Pittsburgh, right out of Highmark Stadium with this stunning one nothing win, the eighth seed uh, beating the first seed, uh, Pittsburgh Riverhounds, Detroit City FC. Uh, Matthew, what were your uh, thoughts on uh, the match? Well, I think the first thing we need to say is this wasn't the Riverhounds doing bad. This was, you've got to give every single credit to Detroit City for what they did. Yeah. They came here to spoil the party. You know, they played very hard. You know, we were talking at halftime in the press box. They were probably looking maybe to keep, keep it to penalties because they knew they weren't going to, you know, they probably weren't going to get anything from open play from the Hounds. But, you know, it wasn't necessarily open play, but a cleared, you know, cleared uh, free kick and, you know, uh, player just scored it through a whole bunch of bodies, and yeah, weight was on sight. And they they had their one chance. He, you know, I was talking the stat. There was their first shot on target against the house of the season, and you know they took it. But again, you got to give all the credit to them. It was really incredible in that Dominic Gasso first goal, Gasso's first goal in as a career. professional in his career. Um, and it's you know, ball comes his way. It's off a corner kick, uh, and really at the end of the day, you go. 75 80 minutes into a match at the professional level and it's nil nil anything can happen yeah exactly and you know, as as bob lee mentioned is incredible 11 minute monologue after the game once it got to about 60 you know about that 60 minute mark you knew neither of these teams were really breaking down there wasn't really that much open play it was really going to be first goal wins and you know sadly for the hounds it was it was detroit it was detroit the going because you saw all the way during the game you know bob lee uh, mentioned it they were getting, they were getting deep, but there was just that one final ball, that one final connection just wasn't hitting. And if they didn't take that chance, then Detroit were just so very, so good defensively that they didn't get it. Then they were never going to. And, and so. Right, that that last ball in the final third, it just there just wasn't much room. Anytime, even like a, on a on a set piece play coming in, you know, a lot of times the pounds seem to find that moment, uh, connect, get something on frame. I mean, not until the 89th minute. Did Pittsburgh have a shot on frame uh, and it came uh, you know and then of course in stoppage time they had a couple of chances uh, and Seinbach uh, washer yeah made an, a brilliant think. save on Albert Dequist really best effort of the night I'd say probably about three or four minutes into stoppage time header yeah, was, yeah. goes low to the right and he just gets reaches his arm out it's one of those I don't know if the uh, USL championship does save of the season but it's given the magnitude of the moment and right. just how far it was and you know against Steve who's you know USL championship top scorer that could very well win you know save of the season it was absolutely phenomenal it was a fantastic save and and again Pittsburgh it early in it, this year has done such a great job of jumping ahead of opponents early yeah. in matches and so this you felt you kind of felt it like 30 35 40 minutes into the match and the hounds still hadn't created a shot on frame and detroit was really bottom doing it both teams were, were yeah, playing very well defensively yeah. but you knew at that point that this might be a tough, this might go all the way to penalties or there might be some weird wacky thing that happens. Yeah, it's one of those things like, again, just down uh, down the other end, there was a loose ball and um, I think it was, I think it was deep work. Just ball his feet, just got a block and the Detroit defender just come in, last ditch tackle. That was one of those where you thought, they're not going to get many. They're not going to get many better chances than that. If they can't again, if they can't take a chance like that, then they're never going to get a decent one. Yeah, and it was very physical too. I mean, I mean, it's a playoff match. It's 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 win or go home, and that's the thing. It's a knockout tournament. And and like you said, Bob Lilly, uh, you know, I thought in his post-match remarks, you know, you can you can definitely sense the fresh the. The disappointment. Um, he talked about the players getting together in the huddle, and Bobby Mertz talked about how much he loved all his teammates. And you know, this this is going to be a tough few days for these uh, the players and his team, the organization. Uh, certainly, we're hoping for a deep run. You know, maybe play four of these games, these playoff games here at Highmark Stadium. Um, but I thought Bob, as you said, it was quite an 11-minute. Um, Model. Yeah, yeah, he summed up everything, you know, talked about the frustration of everything. And, you no, know, he mentioned that he's, they're going to try their best to keep 
as many players. Yes. You know, this 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 incredible team that you know knocked off all these MLS sides and gone this far, but you just know there's some. I mean, Albert Deacon was last one off. I mean, even as we were reporting this, mm-hmm. after, you know, after the last play on the pitch, you, he's probably not going to stick around for long. Jim uh, Jamali Waite, after his incredible season, might sure. it might be off as well. You know, it's a very it's a very good side. You know, he says he wants to keep this strong together, use this as the you know the stu- the building blocks for next season, but. You know, if you're losing arguably one of the best goalkeepers in the league and the league's top scorer, it's going to be very hard. So I think there was that sense of, you know, even amongst the crowd, there was this may have been our best shot in, you know, years gone past and moving forward. If ever we were going to win the you know, win the playoffs, this was probably going to be it. But Detroit came to the party. Yeah, and uh, it's interesting he said that about, um, you know, the team and trying to keep it intact. I mean, you just don't know. And I, I think that the other comment, I think we're all sort of, kind of like you know we were kind of planning too you know like looking forward to the next few weeks and stuff and and even Bob said it, it's just so soon and it stings um, and I think a lot of the Pittsburgh soccer fans are so excited about um, you know where this what this team accomplished already this season and then this moment here um, you know I've been here for since they opened this Highmark Stadium and following this club for all 20 plus years um, and this definitely had to rank up there with uh, some of the one of the more the most disappointing losses in club history but but yet when we asked Bob the question about what was the most uh, impressive accomplishment that this team had this year and and you know you're from England you know there's no playoff no postseason and uh, and I think he said that there's bar none there's nothing harder to do uh, than winning going for 34 games and yeah. putting putting it out there day in and day out, week in and week out, and being as as good as they were to, I guess, what it was, 67 points, yeah. uh, finishing the top of the table. Um, that is n- something not to take lightly. And I think that this organization uh, should definitely be proud of that and uh, should and, and to keep their heads up high. I know it's going to be tough for a few days, but, but that, that is a great accomplishment. Yeah, I think... I think- Obviously, you can talk about accomplishments on the pitch, but I think off the pitch, just the fact that you know, I'm not going to say this is turning into a, into a soccer town, but I, what was it? This is the third time this they, they've ever got over six thousand for a game mm. like this. You know, given their average attendance, you hope that now this is the chance to you know spread the word, get the get the feeling out that you know this can be you know Pittsburgh's fourth major team, as it yeah. were. So I think whilst they can be proud of what they did on the field, I think off the pitch. I'm sure the you know the front office and the executives are going to be very proud of what they've done because whilst they may not have been able to get anything this season, they've at least built the foundations for again big pushes and you know, big things in the future. Absolutely, and to uh, obviously when you get into the postseason, it's a knockout tournament and anything can happen. And tonight was the t- prime example that that. Is, is what's going to happen in these type of scenarios. Yeah, I think I even go back, even go, ask the MLS teams, ask the Revolution, mm-hmm. ask the Columbus crew. On a one get, on a one game basis, anything, right. anything can happen if you, you know, I mean, if you don't take your chances or if you don't get your chances again, like Detroit didn't allow them to, then this is, this is what's going to happen. The, you know, the highest seeds are, are going to, are going to, yeah, you know, are going to tumble. All right. Well, we are going to wrap it up here for this brief uh, post-game reaction here, uh, but uh, there's going to be plenty more to come. We'll have reaction. I will certainly have to sit back and digest some of this and, and put together some sort of an analysis piece over the next few, maybe 24 to 48 hours. Um, we have other, you know, like you said, is this Pittsburgh really become a soccer town? Well, it certainly has because we'll be busy. I'll be busy uh, moving forward in the next couple weeks and you know, obviously Pitt men's soccer and women's soccer and all the college teams. And of course, the high school playoffs will be played right here in a few weeks. So we at Pittsburgh Soccer Now will have plenty to uh, to focus on. But I, I definitely think we're all a little thrown off. And, um, and this is a, a, a tough result uh, for the Pittsburgh soccer, you know, community in the Pittsburgh area as far as... Um, another disappointment from the hounds in the postseason and and so hopefully maybe next year you know even if they don't finish at the top of the table in the regular season that they can they can put something together in the postseason because i think that would bob did talk about that wouldn't it be special you know, to have four straight weeks of you know six thousand plus fans uh and and see it all culminate with 
uh, a U.S. Cup final here in this facility. So um, that's pretty much it here from Highmark Stadium. Matthew, again, thank you for all your contributions. Uh, it's just with us for a couple of weeks, but we appreciate everything you're doing. Thank you. I just hope that I'm not some sort of curse on the house now. My first game, my first game covered. My hope this isn't a side of things yet to come. No, I don't think so. I think we've uh, we've we've worked through other uh, jinxes and curses <laughs> in the past. So. Uh, I'm sure, but thank you, uh, thank you very much. And then we'll have more uh, to wrap up the, today, tonight's uh, coverage, and also to the, from tonight's game and uh, from this season. Uh, but again, thanks for joining us again on Pittsburgh Soccer Now.